It's a beautiful day. The sun's shining. I've got the big lens, the beast, and the red. And so, even though I can't leave my garden and my house, let's see what we can film. I'm sitting inside my house because there's a blue tip box just up above the door and they get slightly nervous if I'm sitting outside. I've got quite a good view of the rest of the garden, so let's see what happens. Not much is happening, so I thought I'd just talk through a bit about the camera. The camera is 8K, so it's huge resolution. I'm actually down at 4K, mainly because my computer just will melt if I throw 8K footage at it. But another thing that that does is when you go from 8K down to 4K, the red crops the sensor, and so you get an effective magnification. It, it makes the lens twice as long, which really helps when uh, filming birds. Ooh, okay, sparrows are back. When we're filming wildlife, we never use autofocus. We always focus manually using a, a hand or a follow focus. And it's quite tricky, especially on a long lens when you're at a thousand millimeters. The depth of field is really, really shallow. So we have to use quite a few tools that are both part of the lens and in the camera that, that help us out. The focus mechanism on the, on the lens is really smooth and it rotates a long way, which means that small movements enable really precise focus. The next thing is that the lens is par focal, and what that means is that it is in focus throughout its zoom range. So if you zoom all the way in, say for instance on these, these irises, and we focus on, on them, as we zoom out, then they're in focus through the entire range of the zoom. And that's quite different to most stills lenses, which change focus as you zoom in and zoom out. So that means that you can zoom in on something, get precise focus, and then zoom out to the composition that you want. The next tool that I use is part of the camera and it's focus magnification. And I've got it set to a, a button on the viewfinder. And what it does is it goes, crops in on the center area of the frame, which means that it's much easier to see what's in focus. One of the other tools that I use, and I, I've also got to set to a button on the, on the viewfinder, is peaking. And what it does is it puts a white line around everything that's in focus, it sort of glimmers in the, uh, in the viewfinder. So yeah, they're the four tools that help us nail focus. Oh, we've got a wood pigeon. Hello, Mr. Woodpigeon. Just flown off. Nice little moment. One of the things that we use on these cameras that really helps with wildlife, especially something that's unpredictable, is using the pre record feature. Pre roll helps you get the footage that is unexpected. Something happens in front of the camera that you don't necessarily expect to happen, or you're waiting for something and it happens quickly. It allows you to, to not miss those shots, which is so helpful. Another feature of this kit that makes it much more usable than say using a prime lens to, uh, to film with, the zoom feature means that you can zoom out in order to find whatever it is that you're filming. And at a thousand millimeters on this lens, it is a really small view of the, of the entire scene that you can see. So it can be quite hard to find whatever you're trying to film. You can zoom out, find it, and then zoom back in again. That really speeds up filming. It's got a bit brighter now, and the birds are like, wow, wow, I've not seen that many birds. They're out there in that hedge, but they're just, right in the dense bit that I can't see. Birds are dicks. But what's really nice is, as it started to warm up, the bumblebees have come out and they're on a couple of flowers just directly in front of me. I'm gonna see if I can film the bees. So, 
I've moved outside now and I'm framed up nice and symmetrically on an iris. Nice purple, oh, here we go. Bees just come in. So I have, there we go, that was quick. That worked faster than expected. Um, so as I was saying, I'm framed up on an iris and I've got pre-roll on um, and just waiting for the bees to come in. The bees just seem to be ignoring my iris. They're flying to all the other ones, but just not the one that I'm focused on. So tempting to go off and reframe on a different one, but this is the best looking one. I suppose I just have to wait, but it's so tempting to reframe. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it. Trust the framing. Just wait. There we go. No, I just flew around the flower. Didn't actually, didn't actually do anything. So I'll give it another maybe 10 minutes and then uh, might swap my framing up. Yeah, we've got a bee on the iris. Nice. Wicked. That's really cool. That's really cool. It's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. The iris makes the bee work really hard for its, for its nectar. It has to squeeze in between two petals. Before it left, it just waited in the air, hung around a bit, nicely in focus for me. So yeah, just really quite cool to, to see that and see that much detail. It's taken about half an hour of waiting, but worth it, I think. One of the really cool things about this lens is that it can see through stuff. And I don't mean through next door neighbor's windows. I mean, it can actually see through plants. It can see through pretty much anything that's not solid. If you're focused behind it, it can see past it. Um, so at the moment I'm focused on next door neighbour's roof, not their windows, and there's a, a plant in the way, but you can barely see it. So as I pull focus back towards us, the plant comes into focus and then push focus back again to the roof. And yeah, it's, it's crazy that the plant just disappears. So you can see through grass and plants and if there's anything in the way of the animal that you're, you're trying to film, it just really cuts through that and um, yeah, it's a, it's a great aspect of having a, a long lens like this. Oh, in fact, here we go. They're just so fast. They're so fast. They just do their job. They're very, very busy bees. Where is he? Where is he? Okay, there you are. So cool. I've just filmed a bee squeezing right in to get the, uh, get the nectar. Its pollen sacs on its legs were absolutely bulging. Lovely. This morning when I thought about doing this, I thought I'd just make a nice little sequence about the birds in the, uh, that are in my back garden, but I've barely seen any. Nothing's come in on my, uh, on my feeders. And so I think I've made a nice little sequence about the bees and the irises. If you've enjoyed this and want to see more, then give it a like and subscribe and there will be more coming up over the next couple of months. As I, uh, as I go out and film more wildlife and, and talk about cameras. See you next time.